Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. If you watched my last video, you see me in the process of doing an overhaul of my Old Town Autopilot 136. And I said I would try to do progress videos along the way. Well, we're at a point where we can probably do that video. I've done most of the electronics, I've done the Sasquatch bar, and I've also made some changes as to what I thought I was gonna do in that original video, and I'll kind of walk through those as well. So before I put this thing back on the trailer, and put the chair uh, seat back on. Let's do a walkthrough of what I've done so far. And if you get any questions, feel free to reach out. And as always, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And again, if you've got any questions, you know, reach out in the comments and I'll answer any questions I can get, uh, I can do for you. So let's get this camera turned around and let's get going with what we did so far. All right, folks. So the first thing I wanna show is this plug up front here. In the last video, I said that I was gonna change this out. Uh, you saw the blue plugs, I think, in the video. And I had people reach out to me in that video saying that they had failures with that plug, even though it's rated for 50 amps. Um, you know, and the ones from uh, Minn Kota are rated for 60 amps. And I don't think, honestly, that this motor pulls more than 32 amps, if I did my math right, and if, I, if I've looked it up correctly. But I had multiple people tell me that that blue uh, adapter you get on Amazon for like 32 bucks had failures. So like I said before, I've never had a failure of this plug. You can kind of, you see it here. I'll, I'll show it here uh, the best I can. Sorry about that. So I've never had a failure. I use dielectric grease. I'm very cautious when I pull this thing in and out. And so I'll, I always put new dielectric grease in there. So it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm going to hold off. I know a lot of guys say, well, before you get in trouble, you know, fix this thing. Um, I'm going to hold off. I, I'm just going to hold off and, and I'm going to keep it with that. Uh, so moving on. Uh, so here's where we're at with the electronics. You can see I've got the Sasquatch bar installed. I've got the GLS-10 and the G, or excuse me, not the GLS-10, but the uh, 106 SV is next to the 73. Mounted to the Sasquatch bar, uh, I the, nothing was changed over here for the S, uh, the 73 SV. That's the exact same wiring that was there before. Uh, they had I had the uh, GT56 coming out as well as the power wire, and then now that what's new here is coming out through the three hole is the power wire and the wiring for the live scope. So that's running back to the GLS10, which I'll show you here in a little bit. So coming from the back side. What you see here on the GL on the uh, 106 is um, we've got the live scope wire, and then this is the network cable that runs over to the um, 73SV. So this is the GT56, the network cable, the power cable, and then so again the uh, network cable, the live scope cable, and then the power cable. So that's what's all running on the back side of the Garmin units. And again, you can kind of see, this is the Sasquatch bar. Uh, I'll probably run a camera off of this post here. And then uh, I still have some space over here. Uh, one of the things that I've read and I've talked to some people, they said, don't use zip ties, which, you know, I used zip ties all last year. So I'll take that advice and I'm using Velcro wraps at this point. Uh, you can kind of see here, these are all Velcro wraps. And one of the things they said was just people are just get them too tight and uh, they end up breaking the cables. I kind of wonder if that's mostly the bass boat guys that um, you know are tweaking them too much and you know getting them too tight and, and things just moving around. So I take it for what it's worth, but I'll take the advice and I use uh, uh, Velcro uh, wraps. Now, one thing I did find, and I really like the idea because one of the major flaws that I have or or problems I have with the Old Town Autopilot are these stupid uh, cup holders and the rod tubes, right? So they fill with water and uh, they don't drain. You can kind of see there's no drain here. So I saw some guy do this. He got these, these uh, flat things online. Uh, he modified them, he cut them down. And that way, uh, so by doing that, they just, you, you fill it up, you cover it up, and uh, keeps the water out. Now, in the Northwest, if you know anything about the Northwest, it rains a lot. And, you know, out fishing in the spring and here, we'll get a lot of water. And I find a solution to hold 
uh, that down, especially when I'm driving without my cover. Right now, I'm just got a zip tie holding in there, and I'll find a, a more permanent solution for that. Probably should have thought about that before I, I uh, trim that thing down because there's probably a better way to have done that. But I do have the um, tubing and the grommet that goes inside of here. That way, I can drain it out underneath the old town or the battery here because there's a there's a drain, there's a um, a scupper hole underneath here that you can actually run the tube underneath and it'll just drain out under out to the to the river or whatever body of water. So I will be doing that at a later date. Uh, I've already bought the parts and uh, ready to go. Now to the big stuff. So again, the wires ran from the through hole up front all the way back. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if you remember the way I had it when I just had the 73 mounted over on the side is I had a box, an ammo box that had the GLS 10 mounted back between the black pack and this uh, wall here. And all the wires were in there and the power wire and everything was ran up along the side over to the power, uh, the pole there and to the 73 SV. And I wanted to eliminate all of that cable as much as I possibly can and just kind of clean this all up a little bit. I wanted to get the, uh, the GLS 10 into the hole and I've done that, but what I've sacrificed, I also talked about running uh, batteries in the hole as well. Um, in looking and working that through, I, I've changed my mind on that. And what I've decided to do now is because I have this space here, is I'm gonna, uh, I've returned those two uh, 20 amp hour batteries that I said I was going to run in parallel and I'm just going to get one 50 amp hour battery I'll probably run down to Harbor Freight and You know get a waterproof uh, box and run a through hole or something out to that So I'm gonna run a power wire off of that and that's gonna run to this red wire here And I'll explain what this goes to here in a second so um, Anyway, where we're at is uh, we'll run uh, a battery for back here that'll power all the electronics which goes to the, the, the switch here. And then the GLS-10 is now underneath here along with the uh, Yak Power 5 port. Because remember I said I did not want to have to get a new uh, Yak Power uh, switch. So I'm gonna continue with the 5 port. Uh, I've got both of those on a uh, their own port and all of my lights are on an import. What I removed is uh, these camera ports here, or these outlets. So I've got one there, I've got one here, and that's what this wire here is. So that's, that'll run and I'll put a separate 10, uh, 10 amp hour battery that I have or something for that. So that'll be just for the cameras, charging my phone, etc. So here's what we've got. And I'm gonna try to do this one handed. I apologize for that. So, Underneath here, and this is, I saw this online where a guy had put this through hole in. Sorry for the barky dog. Uh, put this through hole in in this cap. So now I can just leave this here and never have to worry about taking it off. Let's see if I can fix this out. So now I have the GLS-10. Get a flashlight down in here. And you can also see that I have the Yak Power. So I have just a piece of plywood and if I ever need to, that plywood has actually been in there for a couple years but if I need to I'll go get a cutting board or something and replace that so that's screwed in you can kind of see the screws there as is the Yak power switch and they're also velcroed on uh, separately and then that board is also velcroed underneath uh, to the kayak so that's not going to go anywhere So again, you can kind of see how it's all mounted. All the wires are up underneath there, nice and tight. So, you know, the old way I had this done was, uh, I always had to move my chair whenever I wanted to charge. So I always had to open this up because I had the battery in there and I pulled the battery out or, or something or the wire. I always had to open this up and move the chair to get the wire out to hook the charger up. Now, because the battery will be over here, I don't have to worry about that. And then for my main battery, I've always got a charge port here anyway. So now I don't ever have to move my chair. I don't have to open this up. Um, kind of happy about that. So that's kind of where we're at. I know uh, I've been babbling a little bit. 
that's kind of where we're at as far as the current update. A few things I still got to do, but it's very minor stuff. I did go back as I was doing all this. Something I didn't use last year is this uh, the phone mount. Uh, when I put this Navarre uh, adapter over this old um, rod, uh, the rod tube here, I didn't know that there was. I didn't think there was enough room. But as I was looking at this and playing with this, sorry. Um, I said, yeah, there is probably enough room for that second, and I already had the part, so I went ahead and put that back on here. I might swap it a little bit, but uh, for now, I'm going to put the phone back on there, because last year, I kept that in my life jacket, my PFD. It's kind of a pain in the butt to be kind of about it. I'd rather go back, because I could tether it, um, you know, either to this cable uh, or somewhere else around here. That way, when the phone, you know, if it falls... You know, it doesn't fall in the water, obviously. And then I can always just, you know, keep it there. And it's always there at, the, at my fingertips. So I'm going to put that back on. And then, uh, again, it's a much cleaner installation. I had a whole lot of cable, that, you know, I had power cables and everything else coming off that GLS-10. Everything was coming up here. It was just not as clean. One thing I am still trying to figure out is how to clean this up a little bit. Uh, again, I went back and took the zip ties off. I'm using nothing but um, electrical tape at the moment, and but I want to figure out a way to, to clean this up a little bit here. Uh, look, thought about putting some sort of a, a clamp or something over top of that spring a spring clamp, you know something. You know we'll figure it out. Um, it wasn't too big of a pain last year, but um, yeah, that's where we're at. So again, uh, that's how we've done the. Uh, Sasquatch bar, you can kind of see again what the Sasquatch bar looks like. It mounts directly in. I might move that forward a little bit more. It's, it kind of just goes where it goes, the way it's built. Um, you see what it's going to look like. Once the chair gets in, uh, I'll get out and get this thing um, mounted up. And I thought it would be further forward, to be honest about it, but it looks like it's going to be closer than I thought. So uh, I'll be able to reach forward and, and, and um, you know, it, being a touch screen, be able to do what I need to do. So, uh, so far I'm happy. I'm happy with the way um, I've, I've wired it. You know, I think it's a pretty clean install. So, you know, I, one other quick thing, since I had the chair off, people, a lot of people ask about um, the Old Town seat itself. One of the things I highly recommend is some sort of a rear seat riser. I had a friend, this is just a 3D block that was printed. I think it's a two inch raw, a block. And so with this, because of the way the seat, the, the Old Town seats kind of recline, and I know, I think the PDLs do the same thing. Um, raising this up two inches for me, and it's obviously personal preference, but the two inches allows me to sit in this kayak literally for eight hours a day or more. I never have a problem with my back bothering me, and I do have a compressed uh, a one but I can fish in this kayak all day long without any back issues. Before I did that, my back would be sore after about two hours. So here, with raising this thing up, and honestly, this is just stuck on with uh, 3M tape. I mean, I could, I could really pull that off if I have to. Uh, but again, it's just a 3D printed, uh, and I think I, I got it off of um, Thingverse, and I, I sent the file over to my buddy and said, hey, can you print this up? There's a honeycomb inside of it to give it stability. And so I'm uh, a little over 200 pounds and that thing's been there for three years and I've never had a problem with it. So anyway, if that's what it's worth. So uh, that's where we're at. Again, uh, if you get any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Again, like, subscribe, appreciate it. Uh, help me build the channel. And if you get any questions, uh, I'll answer any questions I possibly can. Y'all have a great day.